Welcome everyone. Uh, we're going to talk about importing your data from Excel and also uh, delimited text files to Oracle using SQL Developer today. This is a feature that's been in the tool for quite some time. It also happens to be one of the most popular features in the tool. We have improved it quite a bit in version 4.1, so I'm going to show you how to do that and how show you how it's changed from version 4.0 in previous versions of SQL Developer to how it's working in 4.1. I have a few slides, but they're just here to keep me on track and in case my software doesn't play nice. Otherwise, it's going to be live demo. If anyone has a question, um, they can unmute their line and ask, or they can send a, a message to the chat. This is being recorded, so your questions will be uh, part of the recording. If you want to ask a question and not be part of the recording, uh, just wait until the end of this when I've told you the recording is off. So uh, I want to show you an ad hoc demo, and then I'm going to talk about how you can step through the ad hoc process faster by skipping a bunch of steps, how you can make imports repeatable, and also how you can run those uh, via command line uh, interface so you can schedule them in a batch process. And at the end, I'm going to talk briefly about um, an additional way you can use our Oracle Development Tools technology to load data from CSV to your database. So just briefly, I know everyone probably already knows what SQL Developer is, but for people seeing this for the first time on YouTube, Oracle SQL Developer is part of uh, Oracle database install. It's also available as a standalone product on the Oracle Technology Network. It's licensed with the database. Uh, it's a no-cost feature of the database, so you don't even really need a copy of the database to use SQL Developer and be licensed for it. Your uh, OTN um, download um, gives you an end-user license agreement you can agree to. So for all intents and purposes, it's free. The only thing you really need to have is an operating system that can run Java, in this case, Java 8. 90% of our users are on Windows, about 5% are on Macs, and a little bit less than 5% are on some um, Linux or um, Unix distribution. I should say more than 4.1 million users worldwide, but give or take 4 million people are, are using SQL Developer today. If you do have a database license, and that database is also current with uh, my Oracle support, you can also log service requests on SQL Developer. If you don't have a database licensed with my Oracle support, you can get help for SQL Developer via our community. So that would be the Oracle Technology Network. There's a space, which is a fancy word for form, on there for SQL Developer. It's pretty active. We've been out for 10 years now, and um, the, the import from Excel to Oracle has been in the tool starting with version 1.1, I think, maybe 1.5. And it looked pretty much the same with a few tweaks up to version 3, and then version 4.1 saw a pretty big facelift and also a big change in the um, kind of the logic and the brains behind the the screens as well. I'll be showing you the tool as it looks and feels in version 4.1. You can get data in a new table. So you can have the table created on the fly or you can import data into an existing table. So I've created an employees table as a copy of uh, the human resources demo schema employees table. And you can see my predicate there where one equals two. So it just got the structure of the table with no data. And I'm going to import data 
um, from an Excel sheet to this new empty table. And I do that by right clicking on the table in the tree. If I right click on the tables node instead, there's an import data here. And if I click this, it's basically the same wizard, except as we're going through the process of mapping the columns from the spreadsheet to the columns in said table, um, we're gonna be creating that table. This is just one easier step. I think most people are using the wizard to import to an existing table. But if you need to create a new table as well, we, we also support that. So the first thing that we've changed in 4.1 is uh, where you go to choose your files. We keep a file history there, and this is a list of all of the delimited text files and spreadsheets that you've um, loaded using this wizard. So I can quickly recall that. And I'll cover this later, but this restore state button so as you go through this wizard, you can actually save everything that you've done and just recall it. So if you need to um, load the same spreadsheet over and over and over again, you don't have to run through the entire wizard. You can just run through it once, save the state, restore the state, skip to the end, and say finish. So just a few things on the screen. This header toggle. Oops, let me uh, turn on my Zoom tool. Uh, where did my zoom it go? Here we go. So the header flag says this spreadsheet or this delimited text file does have a header. So basically the first line or the first row will be the column names. If that's not true, just turn that off and it'll treat that first row as a as a data as a as a record. Sometimes in spreadsheets, you have a bunch of comments up front, and you can use the skip rows control to jump down to where you want to start. This preview row limit is important. Um, as we go through the tool, it's just showing me the first hundred rows in this preview window and the logic that gets applied so when we're doing a verification does this mapping of the column look correct we're just testing that column mapping against that 100 rows if you want to load up the entire thing into memory just increase the limit or turn the limit off and it'll bring everything in that's going to suck up memory though, especially for really large Excel files. Excel is very verbose if you look at it, and um, it could take, you know, quite a few hundred megabytes of RAM out of the Java virtual machine to do that. So use that with some um, caution. Uh, the XLS X style is also more efficient than the older XLS style as well um, and the library we're using is more modern to support xlsx basically it requires fewer resources which means it'll run faster so when all possible use xlsx all right so for excel spreadsheets you've got two methods i can run a batch set of insert statements against the table or i can generate an insert script so insert script is good if you're running into issues with the insert and you just want to dump out a SQL script that you can look at and see what we're generating and maybe fix it on the fly. Or if you want to create a script to run later, it's very good. But for ad hoc things where it's just a few hundred or a few thousand records, insert works just fine. So you'll notice the uh, table name is grayed out because I right clicked on an existing table. And um, after the thing is finished, you can have the script sent to the worksheet um, afterwards so you can kind of see what it's done. And okay, so this is kind of where the big changes start to come into play from older versions to 4.1. 
in older versions, we didn't have the um, the window of the record preview continue throughout the wizard. So it, it made it kind of a pain in the, you know what, to know if you're looking at the right data. This screen right here is saying, select the columns from the spreadsheet you want to include in the table. So if I don't want to import um, commission percentage, I can remove that. I, I do want to include it. Uh, and you can also reorder these as well. This is where the real work starts. So I've made this very easy on myself. I've actually created a spreadsheet from the from a table of the exact same structure. So the column names match already. They don't have to. You can also say match by position. So the first column in the spreadsheet would be the first column in the table. Um, if none of those two things are true, um, you can set this to none. Um, and you can always come in here and manually change this. So the employee ID column in the spreadsheet, which has this data in it, is going to get loaded to this column in the table in the database. Is basically what it's saying. The data type, precision, and scale uh, entries here are again are grayed out because these columns are already defined. When you're in the wizard, uh, when you click on uh, the tables node itself to say create a new table these values would be editable and that's where you would define the the definition of the table that you're creating as you're doing the inserts now this is a pretty small table in terms of rows and number of columns and you really should confirm that each of these look right so we're doing a couple things with the ui here as i click through this list We're changing the text from italicized to just regular or maybe bolded text, it looks like. That's to remind me which columns I've looked at and which ones I haven't. So if I have a 100 column spreadsheet and I'm looking through this, this makes it very easy to go, oh, oh, oh I forgot to make sure a phone number is set up correctly. And again, I can see if the data is going to look good or not. Dates at a particular level of fun. So we're reading the field in from this spreadsheet as text, and here's the text. And working with dates in Oracle, going from text, you always need to give us a date format. So we default the date format to the date format you have configured in SQL Developer itself in the preferences. So if you've created the spreadsheet using SQL Developer and you haven't in the query um, used your own date format to change it from the session date format, it's probably going to be right nine times out of ten. If this is just some random spreadsheet, you have no idea where it came from, you're probably going to have to come up here and choose one that's correct. So if you choose no format, there's going to be zero chance that these values are going to load. And if you choose an incorrect format, um, it, they're not going to work very well either. Now, you can say, to heck with it, I don't care. I just want you to try anyway. Maybe our logic check isn't right. Um, or you just want to try to shove it in and see if it'll work. You can still do that. Um, if you have a critical error, uh, which will show like a red exclamation point, the, the wizard won't let you continue. Um, so the status of this column mapping is the data is not compatible with the column definition. So pick the one that works right. And this drop down is, of course, not exclusive. So th there are many more available. And you'll notice none of these have the times. So you can actually type in anything you want. Blah, 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 blah. Obviously, that one's not going to work either. That one's good. Or it should be good. Yep. Little UI artifact bug there. 
Oh, what else is going on in this screen? Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So you need to look at every column just to make sure they're right. Yep, I think these are good. So here at the end, you can see, okay, it's gonna go into this table, these columns, reading in from this file, from these fields, and here are all the field mappings. And we're gonna do inserts. Now, if I click Save State, I can save this. This basically gets created as an XML file. So, and I could click Finish. I guess I will click Finish. So it ran, and if I open my table, There's the data. I can run this again. And instead of finding the file and doing all the settings, I can say restore state. And it should suck it all in. We'll just pretend it did that. <laughs> So maybe I got a bug. Um, but I'm doing the same file over again here. That's why it's nice to have this drop down. I want to show you what it looks like when you've got some bad data in there intermixed with some good data. And I think I've got one in here. Uh, I should have had this set up better. But ad hoc is always more fun. Mm. Let me manually screw up this Excel file. I'm already at 20 minutes. I've completely failed on my 20 minute promise to you folks, but I promise this will be worth it. While it's doing that, I wanna show you what you have access to when you're not working with Excel. So instead of generating an Excel file, I'm gonna do CSV. That's a silly name. Did I pick a file that doesn't exist? There we go. So um, this is delimited text file, the format set to CSV. So we assume the delimiter's comma. I know you pesky Europeans don't use comma delimiters, so you might switch that to something else. The delimiter could be anything for that matter. And you can also change the um, line terminator as well. So this is where it gets fun. The first method I showed you, again, works great for ad hoc loads. It even works pretty good for million record rows, 100,000 record rows, assuming the data sets aren't super wide or super large. But what if you've got 100 million rows or you know, big data type numbers like 3 billion or 3 terabytes worth of rows? Then I would suggest you use the SQL loader utility, which is old school, or if you've got access to your server, external tables. 
Um, SQL Loader is extremely fast. If you're uh, uploading data to our um, cloud service, our schema service, um, on-premise data, we actually map into SQL Loader files. So what we'll do is you, the wizard works exactly the same, except at the end, if you're writing in SQL Loader mode, we'll generate uh, um, uh, a directory or a zip file for you. And inside of that, you'll have the control file, the data stream, and a script to kick off the uh, SQL Loader session. Now, SQL Loader is part of the Oracle client or Oracle database, so you'll need that installed on your machine to actually use it. You can't run SQL th Loader through SQL Developer. External tables are basically a SQL Loader session um, that you've loaded up into the database. So we'll generate um, the file and create the table for you, but you have to get this um, CSV file up on your database server in a database directory. Um, and that's generally a little bit more privileges than your average developer is gonna have access to. But if you're doing this very frequently and you're working with large amounts of data, your DBA will be probably more likely to give you a directory to use for this because you're gonna be saving him lots and lots of um, IOs and lots and lots of uh, database uh, resources. So you can have your cake and eat it too. You can use the wizard um, to do the mapping and you can use the more robust interfaces to get the data in. So to have it work really well for the super big data sets. All right, so I think Excel came back. And do, 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 do. I know this is super exciting for you guys. I'm going to do some things. Okay. So I've got the weird looking data here. So I've got some boo-boos because those records that I changed were in that first 100 records, we've been able to scan through those. In the um, older version of SQL Developer, the wizard would not do that. And there was a verify button you could click on the end that would find some of this stuff, but um, we're much more likely to catch your problems now. So we have an issue with some of the data employee ID column. It's telling us that we have some data that's not compatible with the column definition because it's defined as a number. And we're actually showing you the record where that boo-boo has been tripped. So I can continue here. I just know that most likely this record is not going to be um, imported. So I've got higher date values that are off. I've got salaries that are off department IDs that are off and manager IDs that are off. So I hope that little detour was worth it. Yep. So the save and reload. Okay. You can set up this entire session in the UI and then from then on run it via the command line interface. So where you put SQL Developer down on your machine, if you dig down into the directory structure, you'll eventually get to a bin folder. And inside that bin folder is a binary SDCLI, not to be confused with SQL CL, which is our SQL plus type command line interface. SDCLI is a command line interface for the entire 
product of SQL Developer. And one of the SQL Developer features that we have in this UI is the import command. So if I run this, um, I can feed it that XML file that we created that has the settings in it. Inside of that, I can also override the data file. So maybe you've saved a session, everything's the same except for the file name of the spreadsheet itself. So there are flags in here to override that. There are also flags to override the connection, the table name. And we have examples of all of the different command line strings you would use to make that happen. So uh, this is probably the most verbose help we have in the command line interfaces for the import method. So it's really, really flexible. All right, so the last thing I threatened to talk about was um, this other way to get data in. So if you're a uh, mobile or web application developer and you've got um, some delimited uh, data that you want to shove up into a table. You can have SQL Developer uh, along with Oracle REST Data Services do that for you. And Oracle REST Data Services um, is a Java application that you can run in your, uh, uh, your, server, your web server, application server, that marshals web requests over to the database and can optionally return back uh, JSON or XML back to your application. So you can think of it as making uh, uh, an HTTP or HTTPS uh, GET request. And we could say, get me employees, and we return back all of the employees in JSON, which your web application would then format all pretty like or employee slash 10, 10 is the primary key, we return back just that record. But we can also do uh, deletes and puts and posts. And where that gets interesting, so if I come in here and in SQL Developer where you have Oracle REST data services installed for your database, I can uh, REST enable this object. And one of the things that gets REST enabled is bulk load. And once bulk load is enabled, we're going to be able to use that same CSV load technology in SQL Developer um, as a RESTful service. As a RESTful service. Now, um, basically the call, you're going to do a post. This um, address is basically saying, um, so where it's installed, the schema that we're calling out to, that you've REST enabled, the, um, the name of the table, and you can also alias tables, so you're making a, um, a post to peeps instead of HR employees. So your end users don't know you're doing it to employees. They're doing to something called peeps, but peeps maps to um, the HR employees table. And the endpoint here is batch load. And I can look here at the, the data that you send over. So you can say, before we get going, wipe out anything in there that's already there. And um, we're gonna batch it up in rows of 50. And we're gonna let it go till there's 50 errors. And then after 50 errors, bail out. What's the file encoding? What's the locale encoding? What's the date format? Basically the same types of questions you'd have to answer um, in the wizard that I just showed you. So this could be, this could be pretty cool for you. Um, one thing I didn't show is you can also do this in SQL CL, which is our new SQL Plus. 
um, you can run the CSV uh, formatting hint in your query, get that data back in CSV to a file, and then we have a new load command um, that maps um, the columns in the same order back up. So that works super quick. All right, so I'm gonna stop the video. Not the video, I'm gonna stop the recording.